Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new Fort Puma. Check this out. We've used this Puma properly. I don't think I'll need my glasses anymore. I need an umbrella now. So you can even have a trail mode. This car is really a Fiesta Raptor. You might get the massaging front seat. My stomach got a little bit upset. What I tried to do is tablet that somebody glued in here. Because that is a pain in the... My shoes are completely wet. Doing it the first time, I never tried. A very important car for Ford in Europe. It is an electrified crossover, or rather an SUV inspired compact crossover with a mild hybrid powertrain. I will explain it all in this video. I'll show you what it looks like, what this mild hybrid is and how it works, and what Puma is equipped with that no other car has today. This is a trend setting car and the point was clearly to have fun. Everybody's having fun so far. You may look at this car and wonder what it really is. It looks kind of like a Mini Cooper, kind of like a Jaguar, kind of like a Porsche Cayenne, or like a Fiesta Raptor. It is based on new Fiesta's platform, so it is a compact car with more ground clearance and a more muscular look. It looks appealing, especially in lively cars, an ST line variant of design. This is the Titanium X. The blue one is a ST line. Most Ford cars are available in this ST line variant. It's like an impact for BMW or an S line for Audi. But it looks cheerful, kind of happy. And I think it has a really big chance to becoming the segment leader because of its technology and the way it drives. We've been driving around here on those twisty mountain roads in Spain and it's really doing well. Well, I don't think I'll need my glasses anymore because it started raining. What we need to say is that the proportions are for sure right for this car. And how big is it? It is 419 centimeters long, one meter 80 and a half centimeters wide and 154 centimeters tall. And those big, even 19 inch rims make it look pretty good and enhance the powerful look. These are actually 18 inch rims, but you can get the Puma with 19s in an ST line variant if you are interested in that. You can get them. Looks like a sudden change of weather and I need an umbrella now. So what's under the bonnet? Actually, it's not only under the bonnet because the powertrain is distributed in different places of the car because this is a hybrid or should I say precisely a mild hybrid and actually this makes a difference. First of all there is a 1.0 liter EcoBoost petrol engine, an engine with three cylinders and one cylinder that can be deactivated or disconnected. We've seen that in old school American V8s where four cylinders could be disconnected. In this car one out of three cylinders can be disconnected which is naturally one of the things that help this car save fuel. The 1.0 liter EcoBoost engine keeps winning an award of the International Engine of the Year. It got it a few times now. Look at this, you can even get a sunroof here. It extends all the way back and it protects you from the insects that try to come inside. There will be five engine options. One diesel, one and a half liter, 120 horsepower and four variants of 1.0 liter EcoBoost petrol engine. The first, the weakest, would be 95 horsepower. Then you've got the 125 horsepower and 125 with the mild hybrid powertrain and the most powerful 155 horsepower 1.0 liter with the mild hybrid system. These are static LEDs. The shape of them reminds me of those in the Ford GT. What Ford engineers like to point out is their resemblance to the look of a canoe. Mm. So what is this mild hybrid thing then? There is a 48 volt battery in a unit that may distribute some power and torque from it, either to help you accelerate or to power some of the car's onboard systems like air conditioning, heating, like some radio and so on. Just to make it clear, this car with this mild hybrid cannot run purely on electricity. The electric unit and the 48 volt battery is just a support to the combustion engine. 
So this powertrain recovers power from braking and in this way it charges the 0.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. And this electric unit has a power of 11 and a half kilowatts and it can add up to 20 newton meters to the top maximum torque of the car or it can relieve the engine by 15 newton meters which means that the car may use 15 newton meters of torque less with the help of this mild hybrid system and this way Puma can save fuel but what is interesting and shocking at the same time is that mild hybrid produces 50% more torque at very low revs comparing to a car just with a combustion engine now that's something, electric power! And as you know, there must be some sacrifices. In this case, it's 25 kilograms of additional weight. So you be the judge if that is a sacrifice or not really yet. Can you see the difference between this window and this window? These are tinted by default. This little, little dirty camera is actually a 180 degree rear camera. Not bad. We've used this Puma properly as it should be used. And then be careful touching. And my personal favorite, it's, I suppose, the next personal favorite. So I'm having a key inside of my pocket. I approach the car. And the gate is open. Look how quick it is. And done. That's pretty unusual. The tailgate is pretty short and that makes it operate so quickly. Just watch some of the people standing there and waiting like zombies for the tailgate to open. Here, you don't have that issue. Another feature is that the engine shuts off below 12 km per hour when you're braking. So once you take your foot off the brake, the engine automatically restarts. So it steps in more quickly and doesn't require you to switch to neutral and then release the clutch. It just does it much more smoothly and much more quickly. In this way, Puma makes you stop using any fuel at some point, much more quickly than in conventional cars. It is a purely front-wheel drive car. What you get here is additional ground clearance, which is 16 and a half centimeters, which sounds like plenty. Guys, I really want to show you something. This is unusual. I'm pretty sure you've seen that in your lives, but today it's really difficult to find a car that would have it. A real handbrake with a line and so on. Just wait for a little bit of snow and this with a front-wheel drive it's gonna be fun. Well, I gotta tell you something. First of all, my stomach got a little bit upset because my companion is a good driver, but it's pretty tough when you're on the passenger seat and it's my turn to be on the passenger seat now. The thing is that the car, after driving on those super twisty roads, it really feels very nimble and light. It is really, really similar to Fiesta. We were wondering if it would be similar, how it would be, but the influence of the high center of gravity is really well countered by the wider tracks, which means the wheels are set more to the sides of the car with more stability. And it needs that because of the additional height. So they even thought of that. You get key free. So just press here and the car locks itself. All you need to do is to come, touch and it opens. I like that. And there's one thing I'm very, very happy about. It's wireless charging. And this is a spot, if you've got a proper phone, that can charge your phone without any wires, without any cables, anything. You just put it there, you put it in this slot, and your phone is automatically charging. And every Puma is getting this. And my God, thank you. Finally, there's a spot where I could put my phone and not really put it into a cup holder, because that is a pain in the cup holder. This car with a 1.0 liter EcoBoost engine with 125 horsepower does pretty well here. We've been pushing it pretty, pretty, pretty strongly I would say and the fuel consumption was around 6.9, 7.3 and we've been really pushing it. Another cool thing is outer high beam. So what this means is that you don't really need to touch the lever responsible for switching from high beam to low beam because the car does it for you. It doesn't actually move the lever but it changes the high beam to low beam automatically and the opposite the low beam to high beam and high beam to low beam it's got a camera 
right here where I'm pointing, which is behind the rear view mirror. And it's sensing the vehicles, it's seeing the lights up to 800 meters in front. And this is a really, really cool thing to have. This is the titanium version, so it has a regular steering wheel, not the one that's flat on the bottom. I like this pattern here and this kind of material here on the door. Even this weaker version is enjoyable to drive in such conditions. And the 155 horsepower is really showing its advantages here. So I guess I can truly say that this car really is a Fiesta Raptor. Take a look at this nice gloss piano black grill. Looks pretty good. <laughs> what a place. In the titanium version, you might get the massaging front seats and here they are. And this actually works. You can feel it very much. It's working all over in this area, depending on what kind of massage you set. You can set it to low, set it to medium, set it to hard. And to me, the hard or high was actually even too much. Nobody else has this in the segment. And here you've got it. This used to be reserved for only premium cars, but clearly not anymore, as you can have it in your new Ford Puma. Check this out. You've got a unique Puma illumination here. Yes, then you get all the gauges on. And in front of you and in front of me, there is a 12.3 inch digital display, a new thing. Please proceed to for... the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. All right, thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. So if you want to switch the screens, you need to press this button, which is responsible for different drive modes. So right now that is a normal mode. Let's go there again. Eco mode. Eco mode looks like this. Pretty similar, I would say. The next one, sport mode. Okay, now we've got something new. We've got some orange and black, or now it's red and black. What's next waiting for us? Slippery, all right, that looks good. I like the illuminations. Actually, we were talking that the quality of this display is really, really good. The graphics are really good. It looks modern and it looks expensive. You can even have a trail mode. All right, that's fun. This is, I think this is used to marking altitude. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but it's fun that we can see it. So this digital display is also going to be in the new Ford Explorer. That's what you get. This kind of animation, it's really fun. I like this kind of gadgets. There are two things that I need to complain about. And first of them is that the door bins are really small and shallow in my opinion. Look at that. You can't really fit anything here. I'm not sure how I would fit a bottle here. I suppose it would have to go somehow that way, but they're really, really small. That's my one complaint. Another complaint is a functional issue. And the thing is that where we are right now, there are many twisty roads. And me sitting on a passenger seat, what I tried to do is I tried to grab something. There is no handle. And there is no handle in the back. And there. Well, I find it a little bit disturbing because it's not like I'm trying to be picky, but I literally tried to grab something and I have nothing to grab. Here are the handles. No panoramic roof. is fine but the 155 is just perfect it's, it's pure pleasure and enjoyment lots of torque there is one thing that I'm not really a fan of and it's this 8 inch tablet that somebody glued in here I am not really a fan of this it's actually not bad because it's quite close to you so your view is pretty clear however I would still prefer this to be moved a little bit further away or to be kind of angled into the direction of the driver so that I could see better what is on it. Activated this adaptive cruise control and it's showing a Mustang yes, as a yes, car yes, ahead yes, of you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Even on those twisty roads you may see the benefits of using the adaptive cruise, cruise control which is using a radar. So you basically set a desired speed and the car is doing the rest for you. You just set uh, the distance that you would like to maintain actually it's the time that you would like to maintain the time gap that you would like to maintain bef between you and the car that's in front of you and the car is doing the rest of the job so you 
basically you don't have to brake, you don't have to accelerate the car, does it for you. If you in the future get the car with an automatic gearbox, with a 7-speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, you may get an adaptive cruise control with a stop and go system, which means the car will be able to stop, to come to a full stop and then start off immediately on its own. You wouldn't even have to touch the accelerator or anything else unless it's more than three seconds, unless the stop is more than three seconds. I'm looking very much forward to that. Nice trim out there. Look at this. Look at this trim. It's pretty nice. Local hazard information, that's a new thing that Ford has introduced. It's warning you about potential danger behind any curves that you cannot see. It works based on connected vehicles, technology, so other cars that encounter any unpleasant event may send information about this and your car may inform you about that. Now, why do you see people touching top of the dashboard and saying that it's nice and soft or that it's not nice and soft? This is not about being nice and soft or not nice. It's not about being smooth and soft and so on and, and enjoyable to touch. This is because if it's hot plastics used there, the car may start making noise after time. So that's why you see people touching this and in case of Puma telling you that it's nice and soft so that you know that this car will not make noise when it gets cold or when the frame bends a little bit so that's a plus however all the way here it is hard but most of it it's nice and soft like this is hard for example well, I guess it doesn't need to be soft in those spots then so in general I would say that it looks a lot like a Fiesta like a Focus or like an Eco Sport inside. And to be honest, I think I prefer when cars have their own unique character and do not really share that many of components inside. Removable seat covers. Do you see a zipper here? It starts here. So what you do is you pull around. I'm doing it the first time, I never tried. No, I'm good. What you do now is you just peel this. Take it off. Ah, I should disconnect it here, all one-handed. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. And then, and you just take it like this. So what this gives you is a possibility of changing the style if you want to. Or, as you probably already see the need, can be great if you need to wash these covers. If you've got kids, or if you've got dogs, or if you've got drunk friends, it's great. I'm just saying, and there's the same kind of zipper somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Well, now, once you're here, you've got access to this thing called Mega Box. It basically is a sink that somebody decided to put into the car. Thanks to it being here, you've got 456 liters of space for whatever you want to carry. My quick presentation would look like this. You come here, you take this, you lift it from the inside, not from the outside, so that you know. Turn it, remove it, and you may do whatever you want. Then put it back the proper way. Seems pretty easy, like this one way or another. And it's done. So yes, there's a cap on the bottom. The fact is confirmed. So you may pour water and take a bath if you want. Just remember it's up to 50 kilograms. If you are not interested in the mega box, then you may simply adjust the height of the floor. You want to do something crazy, like access the mega box, just put it up. Up. First position. Second position. Here's the system of those hooks that actually hold it in place. See, if I remove this, it's coming back down. So that's what's holding it in two places. Then if you want to put it down, you simply press it, this floor, it's pushing the hinges back and you've got access to the lower level. And this is what it lays on before and rests here. So look what I've done. I've put all the things here. Now what I do, I just set this at the higher level and it's as if nothing happened. And definitely one of the best features is Bang and Olufsen sound system. It's got 575 watts, 10 speakers, and it plays really lovely. 
This thing is absolutely worth its price. This is one of the best sounding audio systems out there. The fun stuff is this whole boot shelf. It's mounted differently. There is a system of those straps and attachments that's allowing you to keep it all the time on the tailgate itself. So there's no need to remove it or even to touch it. This is an invention and Ford already patented this and it's going to find its spot in the new Ford Kuga as well. That's pretty interesting. Puma comes with automatic rain sensing windshield wipers. So you may completely forget about turning them on and off as the car will do it for you. It works very well in this car, much better than in a Mondeo, for example. There is a huge gap in quality of the technology used. This is a really modern car. outlet this looks like they are painted it's not a cheap foil wrap actually it's not cheap anyway this is different than in the titanium version once you get to the car you've got a key that you need to do something with you may either keep it in your pocket or there's a beautiful storage a pocket for it very nice and smart I feel like the steering wheel is a little bit big I think it would be a little bit more consistent with the whole interior if the steering wheel was a little bit smaller because it looks very nice. It's got this different pattern, this perforated leather here. It's flattened on the bottom with those chrome accents here and here and here and here. There's a lot of buttons. This car by default has a system called pre-collision assist. It is preventing collisions. So it's got a camera or it's got a camera and a radar, depending on equipment. And it can actually slow or completely stop the car for you, avoiding a collision or at least slowing it down enough so that you don't wreck your car or don't kill yourself. It can slow it down as much as possible if you do not take any action. First, it will warn you. If you do not react, it will break. Thanks to the fact that this car has a camera, it can see the road in front of you. It can also see the signs and it's recognizing speed signs and no overtaking signs. So it's letting you know on the dashboard here, what is the current speed limit? Another thing is that it can have a, and this one actually does have a heated steering wheel heated front seats, automatic climate control, blind spot information system. So what this system is, it's warning you when there's a car or any other vehicle in your blind spot that you may not see. Actually, it's not only about the blind spot, but anything that is behind your car and you may not see it. There's one more great feature, which is called cross traffic alert. It allows you to know whether there's anything coming from the sides when you're backing up, whether any vehicle is approaching your car from left and from the right when you're backing up. This is a really cool thing. It's based on radars that are under this beautiful but dirty rear fender. And yet this little button here lets you park the car with some help. This is called Active Park Assist. This is basically turning your steering wheel and letting you know on the display right here what you need to do so that the car parks itself. All you need to do is just play with the with the pedals and changing gears. These are the side sensors for active park assist. That's front and that's for rear. And underneath the bumper, inside, there are radars that are responsible for blind spot information and the cross traffic alert. These are just parking sensors. Please do not mix them with the radars inside. What it also has is the system called lane keeping alert. And this system helps you stay within the lines. It's having a camera that's monitoring the lines in front of you it helps you keep the car in between. Ford has one thing that many people have heard about, and this is called professionally quick clear. What it really is, it is a heated windshield. It is electrically heated. It's not just blowing air. You've got the button responsible for it here. So this is internally heating up the windshield. I wish I could lower this seat a little bit more than I can. I'm not one of those that like to be dragging their bottom on the, on the street. But I feel like I was bending a little bit forward, leaning forward in the seat, just because I felt that the roof is pretty low uh, to my head. And <laughs> actually it's not, it's definitely not. So it turns out my shoes are completely wet, inside and out. This car drives pretty well here. I don't feel any body roll to be honest. 